Hello everybody and welcome back. So today's video we're going to be putting some new firmware on our Sunlu S8. So uh, when we get this machine it's it runs pretty slow to start with right out of the box. So we're going to be updating the firmware. Something a little newer, something with more functionality. Um, it originally comes with Marlin but we're just going to be doing an updated version of Marlin. So get this file go to edge and I found one um, I watched this guy's channel a little bit it's a TH3D um, he has a pretty good one um, for this machine here and it's already set up for the machine so it's pretty easy to do um, so you want to go to his website go to his help center scroll down to downloads scroll down to Sunlu and I'll say Sunlu S8 firmware with the 2560 board. Uh, this isn't exclusive for this board. Um, I'll open up the front panel and show you guys. Uh, I do have the 2560 board, but um, it's not exclusive for this. And then just go down to here to download, and you can download the zip file right here. So once you get that downloaded, uh, I threw it in my Marlin folder on my desktop. It'll come in right here. It'll say TH3D Unified 2 RAM Sports. It'll be a zip folder, so you just extract that. Once extracted, I extracted it to the same file. You can open it up. You get a README page. Gives you some hints. Downloading. Installation. He also comes with guides. For the Easy ABL, ABL Pro, Easy Out. Um, he has some ST files for the Easy ABL mounts, uh, solid bed mount cases, mini adapter ring, leveling blocks, bed level tests, solid bed mount camera adapters. So he has some good stuff in here. Really appreciate that. From going down to firmware, and this is uh, pretty much like our Troxy setup here. We get our PIO folder. Marlin folder. So, go ahead and close that. You want to open up your Visual Studio. A PIO. Scroll down through here. I got a lot of this open. Let me close this down. There you go. Marlin. Configuration H. And that's what we have pulled up here. So this is what it's going to look like right as soon as you open it up. So he also, this is his firmware. I think he uses this for everything in his print farm here. So you can also choose other printers down through here as well. It's not just Sunlu. You have Creality. But you want to scroll down through. And you'll get to the Sunlu printers. So on mine... Let me comment everything back out. I kind of show you here. So this is what it'll look like right off the start. So you immediately want to come down here, no matter what board you have, to find Sunlu S8. Um, I made this mistake of just defining this with this board, kind of like how our Tronxy firmware uh, defines were. Uh, on this one, you have to define both. You have to define Sunlu S8 as your printer, and if you have this board, you have to define this line as well. So define both of those lines. If you have an easy ABL, you can define the OEM uh, easy ABL mount. Or you can do a custom probe. So if you do your own fan shroud, you do custom probe. You can set up your offsets. Uh, he has a video where he installs his easy ABL system on a Sunlu. And he does the custom probe, and he shows you the offsets and everything you need if you use the same shroud he uses. So this is all for your easy ABL stuff. Um, you have fast probe on. You can do super fast probe. But we do not have that. We're just to have a stock machine. We just wanted to update our firmware. So on this page, that's pretty much all you got to do. And then you can also change the name as well. So, 
this will usually say change me and you have to define these custom printer names and then you can call this whatever you want if I can type so that's what that'll look like there you can do your home locations uh, I did enable fine baby stepping you don't have to but it'll just change your resolution down um, this is for your linear advance you want to enable that this here manual mesh leveling since we do not have an easy ABL setup on ours I did enable manual mesh leveling this will pretty much be the same as regular auto bed leveling um, except you gotta go down do the points manually and use a little paper and get it where you want it and it'll do its nine points across the board you'll hit finish and store your settings and then I'll give you this manually you can also set up your power loss recovery here and arc support is already enabled so if you want to disable arc support you define line 385 here and that'll be the end of your configuration settings so you don't really want to mess with anything down here all your uh, configuration stuff is up here now what I did with mine you can open up your status screen this is a status screen logos you can adjust those You can go to configuration advance this will be your temp sensors oh this yeah so this will be like if you know what you're doing you can go down here and mess with some stuff but if you're just looking to get the firmware usable you, there's nothing you really have to do down here this change up some fans um, you can also do a little bit of adjustment for your settings in here as well. But yes, that's what all this is. okay so here is boot screen if you go to your boot screen this is going to have his logo on here for his uh, th3d website and, and channel um, i will show you guys real quick on how to make your own custom boot screen logo now for here we changed his logo out just for the marlin i we added this in on the side you don't have to have all this but it just shows you what it would look like and I'm going to show you guys how to put your own custom uh, image in here so this is the formatting he has in the firmware for everything so we're gonna we keep the formatting the same so to add our custom one like we did here it's back out of Visual Studio go back to edge and we have this at marlinfw.org tools and this is the uh, converter here this is like our image bitmap generator so to say so as you can see we took this file over here this picture we found we shrunk it down to the correct size which I believe is 128 by 64 124 by 68 uh, something like that you'll see if you try to upload a file too big it'll tell you what size you need and then I just used uh, um, 3D Paint and changed the canvas size down for that picture. So we open it up and this is what it'll look like on your screen during boot up. Now normally it's going to have binary and that will be off. 
So instead of binary code, you want to click that off. And you can add the art in on the side. That's all commented out. That's what we saw on our firmware. And it will usually be bitmap to start off with. We want to change it to boot for our boot screen. You copy all this here. Go back to your firmware in Visual Studio. And you'll paste all that down through here. Now when you paste it, make sure none of these are doubled up. You define your boot screen timeout width and height. So 128 by 64 is our width and height. So down here it'll say made with Marlin bitmap converter. Give you the website. And it'll say uh, program once. And then here's our custom start BMP prog mem equal. It'll tell it what to load up. And that's the end of this. So you can also change this with other stuff too. You can go to your status screens, you can change your status screens. But for the boot screen, we change this. So we turn your printer on, this is what you'll see right away. And you can also change your timeout and everything on here as, as well. So that's how you can put in a custom picture. And you can do this with anything you want. I just wanted to keep it simple with Marlin. So we use that kind of a logo there. But you can have your own custom ones in there. I will say it does work better with uh, more like black and white kind of pictures. Uh, sometimes even like with my channel logo, um, not all of it came through. So the three did. Uh, Warrior did not really come out that well. And then the D was completely gone. So I would just use black and white photos. Uh, it seems to be converted the easiest. So once you get all that set up, everything how you want it. You'll go down here, and down here it'll say Upload. So we're not doing this with an SD card, we're going to be using this over USB. So before you upload, you need to go to PIO Home, go down to Devices, and these will give you your COM ports. So this communication port here uh, is not for a printer. Mine is unplugged right now. So you'll want to plug your printer in. Turn your printer on, hit refresh. You have refresh the screen, you'll see a new COM port on there. This is what you need, is what COM port you need. So once you know what COM port it is, go back to home here, we need to go to, Okay, there it is. All right, <laughs> I'm sorry, I lost lost it for a second there. But yes, uh, platform io .ini. That'll be under the firmware tab, and this is what'll bring you up. So it'll start up here. Scroll down to line 438. 438 is going to be your upload port. This is what port it's going to send the data through. You want to put the COM port that you have for your printer. So my printer was COM6. You didn't see it on there. My printer's off right now. Um, I already did this. But so COM6 is mine. So you type in COM6. So now it knows where to go. So now you go down here. You hit the little arrow. It says platform IO upload so when you upload this it'll build your firmware first before uploading it'll say success and then it's going to bring up another screen for uploading now if we go back to th3d's uh, website here he'll kind of show you some of this you'll have your success how long it takes showing you your upload and this is what it'll look like while it's writing to your device so it'll say reading I'll say writing and these will fill up so during this time you want to make sure that you don't unplug anything move anything uh, turn anything off because if this doesn't finish writing it's gonna brick your board also while you're building your firmware just close all your other windows out and all your other programs just leave uh, Visual Studio open during your build you definitely don't want to have any slicers open for this so once this is finished writing, and you'll look at your printer, it'll say, uh, 
it'll reset and it's going to show up as Marlin. It'll say uh, new firmware was added. And as soon as you do that, you want to reset your EEPROM. And I, after that, I usually shut it down and kick it back on, reset EEPROM again. And um, then you can go through and set up all your uh, settings and everything for the new firmware again. So that's it for the computer side. Let's go to the printer side. And I'll show you some of the new firmware. All right, I almost forgot. Uh, I might sound a little different because this is my phone. I was in the middle of editing and I forgot to open this board and show you guys. Um, first, this connector power. You got three screws right here in the front. And make sure you eject that thing. Because I already threw it away, but I snapped one of these in half. <laughs> so make sure there's nothing in your slots. So three screws on screw them. Kind of pick up on the bottom a little bit, slide back, tilt out of the way this way because your screen ribbon is here. And there's your board. So bring in right. Oh. Focus, there it is, SH2560, A988B1.01. So that's how you tell what board you have. If it's that, do the 2560 defined line. Uh, if it's something different, don't worry about it. Alright guys, so this is our Sunlu S8. It is off right now. Let's go ahead and kick this on, and I'll show you guys that startup screen. If it would focus, mm, well, there you go. So it's obviously going to say TH3D on there, under the Marlin version. But the first screen that did pop up during boot was our Marlin. So moving on over here. So, we go into our settings, you get our info screen, motion temperature, configuration, change filament, about printer, release SD, print from SD. So if we go to about printer, and we go down to firmware info, you'll see Marlin, TH3D, and give you your printer's name, extruders, and mesh leveling is on. Go to your board info, it'll tell you your board. Going back, under configuration, the first thing you're going to want to do is go down here, it says reset EEPROM. So do that right off the bat. And then shut your printer off, kick it back on, and you should see your boot screen, everything updated. And now you're all set and ready to go for your new firmware. Um, I already did do a quick print with these, and I'll show you over here. So these, let me get them lined up so you can kind of see a difference here. This is the first calibration cube. Second calibration cube is in the back here. Let's move somewhere, maybe you guys might be able to see this. Okay, so old one right here. Kind of see the top is uh, shiny, but it's a little messy. After the firmware. 
a lot smoother, cleaner looking. Let's go to the X axis. X axis, not a large change. The Y, both Ys don't look that great. And these corners also were pretty bad. I'll try to show you. So you can kind of see we got this lip here that's starting to bulge up. And even on the new one, it's not as noticeable, but there's still a little bit of an issue. And that's mostly due to cooling. And I'll have a fix for that later. We'll be installing a printed fan shroud that we uh, printed on our Troxy down in there. So yeah, these were the two cubes. Um, definitely was quicker. So the slicer said 28 minutes, I believe, 24 minutes. Uh, it printed the new one out in 38 minutes. Uh, this one took uh, closer to like 45, I believe. And also, I was printing out some cylinders. Uh, let me find like a half printed cylinder. You can see like all the fails I've been having with this printer <laughs> trying to get it to print. Um, I'll show you down under the bed here. I'm going to spin you sideways. You can see no bed spring, solid cylinder. Uh, so I made those four little cylinders. That took 58 minutes. So there was definitely a speed increase uh, just changing the firmware around. And a little bit of quality control as well. So, yeah, that Y-axis, um, that's not firmware. That's hardware. And we'll be fixing that. Uh, we got a shroud and some screws over there we're going to be putting on in the next video. So stay tuned for that. But that'll do it for this one. Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.